My name is Satoshi Kurosawa. Um, came from Japan, and I, my profession is water supply engineer. So I thought uh, it was the first time I'm the only engineer from Japan, but I was wrong. I was not uh, the only one. But uh, uh, my slide, my pictures uh, that I, I'm, I'm going to show you seems to be a little bit different from what uh, I have seen before my, my presentation. So, so let me uh, briefly introduce uh, all the, uh, the issues that we face in Japan and uh, in other countries. I came here for the first time to see the Black Sea. It's a very, very beautiful, uh, wonderful sea. But we also have a sea here. The picture uh, I have taken in the southernmost island of Okinawa. It's a small island, but uh, with uh, one million population, uh, plus five million tourists from all over the country. So uh, the beach is not only for swimming. When we, when we go out for swimming, we want to take a shower, we want to drink beer and water, then we need more water. So the beach is not only for swimming, but here you can see this is a seawater desalination plants we built uh, about 15 years back. Until that time, they had a very, very difficult time to get the clean water. After we, we built this seawater desalination plant, they have enough water. But this is not only the case in Okinawa, in California, uh, in, in Australia, in many parts of the world, they are facing the difficulty in getting clean water. So let me um, briefly outline the water supply systems and uh, the, the issues we are now trying to deal with. So uh, when I travel around the world, uh, I quite often see these kind of photos and, and uh, pictures. So I visited uh, Hanoi in Vietnam. Um, I visit this city usually once or twice in a year. And um, the, the city is expanding so fast. People is just coming in from the uh, little, little island, little regions to the city. And city population is uh, uh, growing so fast, and the city mayor need to get the water to supply to the city. So they built a huge water aqueduct, uh, water transmission mains. But because they want to save the money to build that one, they built six years. Oh, sorry. They built this six years ago. This is a 2.4 meters very big water trans transmission mains. But within six years. They had water pipe leakage eight times. So they, they are facing water supply, diffi very difficult situation in, in this kind of uh, cities. This is not only the case in, in Hanoi city. Many Asian cities are facing quite a similar kind of uh, water shortage. Right? Then the people need to get water. So what they do here is you can see um, this one. This is not electric power cable. This is their water supply system hooked onto the power cable. So we have to see carefully which one is power cable and which one is water supply systems. So what they do here is they put the uh, PVC pipe attached with small pumps and they suck the water from nearby pumps and they send the water buy this kind of tubes to their households. So each household do this kind of things. So you can see here, they call it something like a spaghetti type water supply systems. And because they have to do that, because they cannot wait until the city fix all these kind of engineering problems. So this is a situation they face uh, in, in many um, cities, big cities. So water, uh, we need water for our life, but we have to be aware where it comes from. Water, we take a part of natural water cycle systems. So we have to understand carefully what is the uh, natural water cycle systems. So we need a science to better understand natural water cycle systems. We should not too much have an influence to the natural water cycle systems. We have to be very modest to take what amount of water we can take from natural water systems and streams. But we are again facing 
the, the, the other kind of problems. Because the natural water cycles is, is gradually changing. Uh, many scientists say that it's partly because of climate change. And climate change impact is especially severe in developing countries, including Africa. This is uh, a picture of, of uh, the, the, um, the cereal production damages, a percentage reduction of the future cereal, uh, like, like corns, weeds production, how much uh, production will be decreased in some part of Africa. So brown one is more than 50% reduction of their cereals. So it's, it's very, very um, difficult for the future uh, in these countries. So I visited one of so-called sub-Sahara country, which is called uh, uh, Burkina Faso. And uh, I saw here, this is the only big tree I can find. So no rain means not only people cannot get water, they, they cannot get fuels, you see. Because if you don't have any rain, no plants, no trees, so they don't have their fuels. Okay? So it's very, very difficult for them to get water. So what they do is, this, this is a, a villages, a very typical villages in Burkina Faso. So the, the ladies, um, housewives, ladies, they have to walk distances, sometimes a few kilometers to get water. And this one is about uh, 20 liter, means 20 kilo. So she's got two bottles, it's 40 kilometers, 40 kilograms, and they have to carry back the water, back into their house. And sometimes they use bicycles to get the water back to the house. But this lady, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bottles. So they have to use a car with donkey. But their family size, I, I have to say, their family size is very, very large. On the average, they have 20 to 24 members in a household. So, you can calculate simply how much water they have to carry back to their house every day. So it's, it's a big challenge. And according to this uh, publication, it was published in Plus Medicine back in 2010, there's a linkage between the amount of the water supply and uh, the infant mortality rates. This one x-axis is the total number of population in, per in percentage unserved population means people without access to pipe water. So from zero to 80%, and this one is infant mortality rates. So if a country, this is a country-wise data set, and if a country um, has a high rate of unserved population, the infant, infant mortality rate in general is higher. So this is a general linkage between the infant mortality and total number of unserved population. And these bubbles, Large bubbles means large country with higher population, and the yellow one is low income country, and, and, and red one is high income country. So you can see from the picture, these bubbles, um, mostly yellow ones, means the uh, low income countries suffering still the uh, low rates of uh, uh, water supply service and high rates of population or infant mortality rates. So when we go see um, the villages, we always ask as a water engineers, we have to figure out what we can do. So we ask, can we take water sample? And, and this lady is a, a master of this well. She sort of dominates and she say, okay or not, okay. So she said that, okay, she's a translator. So I requested for a sample. And she said, okay, but you have to take the sample yourself. I will not help, you have to take your sample. It was a kind of difficult, but I finally, I was happy, I get the sample. <laughs> okay, but you see, this is just two liters, and they have to bring back these bottles, 20 bottles per day. So how many times do they have to do this? So it's a big challenge. And on top of that, uh, I, I put the water into a cup, plastic cup, and you can see inside, it's, it's, it's filled with uh, uh, dirt. And they have to bring back this water to their households. And then they have to figure out whether they can drink directly from this or they, they can do something to make it better. Okay. So usually, 
uh, we can find some um, sort of uh, methods to clean the water. This is very uh, famous, live straw. But they, they can drink just a small amount of water. And this is also a uh, ceramic pot filter. So made in Burkina Faso, they can produce this kind of ceramic pot. You can see no hole. It's not a flower pot. If it's a flower pot, you need a, a hole here. No, no. You cannot use your flower pot. So no hole. No hole. But this uh, is not good enough to uh, separate uh, E. coli and viruses. Uh, it's spore is so, so, so large, so that all germs and, and E. coli pass through. And this one is solar disinfection system, so it's, it's good, but uh, uh, when it's cloudy, they cannot get clean water. So these are the challenges they face. So we brought some instrument from Japan to um, Burkina Faso. Uh, this one is a, a membrane filter, a ceramic membrane filter, uh, filter manufactured by a Japanese company. And it's very good. And uh, these are the photos of water. This is a, what we call low water, the water we just take out from the well. It's a bit uh, 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 dirty. And this is a filtered water, it's clean. So he's uh, my driver, and he's a bit thirsty, helping us getting water, and he requested this water. So I said, okay, you can take it. And he's very happy to get it. <laughs> and this one is uh, our so-called, we, we have to clean, wash, the uh, membrane filters, we call backwashing, putting the pressure from the other side and clean the membranes. And this one is backwash wall. So, so, so this filter retains those turbids and also some uh, equalizers. So this is good, but it uh, um, seems like this one is a bit expensive for the local people. Uh, this one is very easy, just pick up the water, but two meters high, and this pressure it's about two meters difference. It's good enough to get the water and in a bucket. So we thought this one is good, good for them, but they said this one is a bit too, too expensive for them. So then uh, we have to figure out what we can do again. So this kind of small water treatment systems, as you know, is becoming more and more popular because municipalities are lacking a sort of uh, financial and technical resources to supply enough water. So the people, they have to do um, themselves to get the water, clean water. So these are the uh, rooftop tanks uh, in Vietnam, and they have a variety of ceramic filters to, to clean the water. But in cities, they have uh, quite an advanced water supply, or water cleaning systems, just under the sink in your, in your kitchen. So this is equipped, equipped with uh, activated charcoal, adsorption, ion exchange, UV, and the bus osmosis membranes. It's a very advanced one. But they want to buy this and uh, equip this, uh, uh, their drinking water. It's, it's a bit expensive, but uh, they like it. And this one is households, very typical in Vietnam. So we can tell that uh, uh, they have a sand filter here. You know why? This, the, the wall is lead. This is lead because the groundwater contains iron, and sometimes they don't clean the, the, the filter. So there's an overflow of iron containing groundwater, so their wall becomes brown. So you can tell which households have sun filter. So this, all this, they, they try to get clean water. Um, one of the problems in, in many countries in these days is uh, uh, very um, a trace amount of uh, toxic substances, including arsenic. Uh, in Vietnam also, they, in the groundwater, they have a high concentration of arsenic, and the people are worried about it. And that's why they, they try to buy uh, household water treatment kits. But this is the results, our results of uh, our water treatment using a sand filter, a very simple sand filter, and this one is reverse osmosis membrane filter. So uh, arsenic usually have, in human arsenic has, has uh, arsenic-3, arsenate, and arsenite, arsenites and arsenates. And this is total arsenic, and this is arsenate. So it seems like uh, with sand filter, it is good to remove the uh, arsenate, AS3, uh, with more than 90%, 90 to 90%, 99% removal. But this uh, total arsenic removal is a bit low, less than 90%. 
And with the mass osmosis membrane, it, 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 it is opposite. The total arsenic removal is between 90% and 99%, and arsenic-3 removal is less than uh, 90%. So we suggest that a combination of these two processes may produce arsenic free a very low amount of arsenic for them to, uh, to pee. So uh, this is a situation uh, they are facing. But the only problem with this system is recovery rate is very low. Because reverse osmosis membrane can produce only 20% of the water which is passing through the reverse osmosis membranes. That means 80% is gone. It's just waste. So my student Vietnam, from Vietnam calculated what will be the future if every household is equipped with membrane systems, reverse osmosis membrane, how much percentage of water demand in the future in Hanoi City will increase? Well, that is a lot. So this is good in terms of arsenic removal, but it is not good for the water conservation and water management. So again, we have to figure out alternative systems. So we, as a water engineer, in the past are uh, facing different kind of uh, contaminants. Long time ago, we just tried to leave, uh, remove from, from water, like fleet, uh, sand, um, like that, uh, protozoids and, and bacteria. But nowadays, we have to get rid of uh, small ones, like viruses and some colloids um, and organics and disinfection byproducts. We disinfect uh, water with chlorine and other uh, oxidants. Then they produ we produce some very small amounts of disinfection byproducts. So we have to remove those. And sometimes ions. So this is a big challenge because to supply water to a small community, we have to supply at least 1,000 meter cube of water for small community. But when it comes to a big city like Balna, we have to produce a large amount of water, like one million meter cube per day. That is a huge amount of water. But uh, we have to target these small things. So there's a big gap uh, between so, uh, sort of analytical chemistry levels of contaminants and engineering application of uh, any kind of methodology. So there's a big gap between these two. But, um, so uh, to do that, uh, in the past, uh, we uh, employed uh, several kind of systems. The most easy is gravity sedimentation systems. Just put the contaminant in the water, leave it for a few hours to a day, and then the grid will gradually um, uh, settle down. The second uh, is uh, when it comes to a little bit smaller ones, we have to put some chemicals, we call the chemical coagulation processes, combined with some membrane or sand filtration systems. And then when it comes further smaller ones or some, some, some uh, bacteria and viruses, this is not good enough, good enough. So we have to add some disinfectants into the water. And then uh, we have other ways to uh, put the oxidants to degrade those contaminants. And also, we have some absorption processes like activated charcoal. All these are chemically intensive, and, and we have to put a lot of energy. So, so then we have to figure out what to do with that. Uh, according to the report of U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in the United States, about 3% of the whole energy is to be used to supply and treat the water to the cities in, in the U.S. So we have to deal with this high energy demand. So uh, with that all back then, we um, saw that uh, exclusion zones, um, so model, will be the future of our water treatment processes because it requires very, very, uh, almost no energy. Okay? So it's a big challenge because this is just, uh, it's, 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 it's more than one, a thousand times greater than the, the molecules but still a few hundred microns. But we have to produce this amount of water. So it's a big challenge for us as an engineer. Uh, with that background, I would like to report to you uh, a couple of results uh, that we um, published recently. 
Um, and maybe um, it is not necessary to explain uh, what is the uh, extrusion zone phenomenon. Uh, this is one example. Um, this is a, a natrium membrane, and this is called a particle. And after some minutes, we can see a clear water zone here. So uh, we, we measured the size and the rate of uh, uh, formation. So the size gradually increases up to uh, 300 uh, seconds or five minutes, and then stabilize. We monitor this one up to 15 minutes or 900 seconds. So it's almost stabilized, no change up to 15 minutes. Um, so, but uh, this is uh, a few handlet microns, and we want to make it larger, larger scale, a little bit larger. Even if a household scale, it's too small scale. So, uh, this is a conventional system, so uh, like chemical coagulation, filtration, and energy intensive membrane filtration systems. So, forget about this. Uh, we try to focus on how we can make use of exclusions on phenomena. So uh, Professor Pollack already uh, reported one very, very interesting system with uh, syringes. And uh, the goodness of this uh, exclusion zone uh, application is particle and pathogen removal without chemicals and, and external energy, very small energy. And no byproducts, of course, there's no oxidation processes, so no byproducts, and it's very simple. Okay, it looks uh, very good, but we still have a challenge. The water productivity is still very low in this system. Water production rate is reported to be 2 milliliters per hour, and recovery rate is still not quite high. So then we have to figure out how to improve this uh, low productivity. The idea is good, but uh, as an engineer, we have to improve the productivity. So I discuss with my students, my researchers. I discuss for three hours, then, then we found after three hours, something's happened here. Okay, this is Napium membranes. We can see our extrusion zone very close to the Napium membranes. Microsphere. So this one is a bit large and, and it gradually settles by gravity. So we found the difference between the gravity settling and this one is with Napium. So the difference we define as uh, are the effect of, we call it phase separation, this uh, clear water phase and, and uh, particle phase. So pH is gradually getting down after this phase separation. So um, because uh, this happened only after we put the natrium membrane piece into the water, we estimated there will be linkage between the exclusion zone and phase separation. So we monitored, we measured the development of uh, EZ and uh, the top uh, supernatal layer. So these circles indicate EZ growth. So in the past, we monitored only 15 minutes, and then, OK, stop, the next experiment. And but that time, we discussed for a long time, and we forgot about our experiment for three hours. Then we found that we have to wait for three hours to see what's really going on there. So we monitor, it's going up, 15 minutes, oh, stabilized, stop it. But we continue. Then we found it's gradually coming down to nearly zero. Then the, uh, the supernatal size is gradually growing up. So this one is a, the whole supernatal, but this one is gravity settling. So we calculated the difference to be the cause of phase separation. So this blue triangle is the net uh, supernatal size. It's gradually going up, whereas the uh, easy size is going down. And this monitoring further um, encouraged us to think about the linkage between EZ and phase separation. Then uh, we took uh, uh, close-up pictures uh, how the uh, phase separation to be take place. This is uh, about three minutes. Nothing happens. Ten minutes, we can see some water here. Thirty minutes, the water is here. And forty minutes, we can see clearly, uh, very clear water. And if we add some salts, sodium chloride, uh, with 0 0.5 uh, water concentration, it's high concentration, so that we can prevent uh, uh, easy formation. In these cases, we cannot see any anyone. But without salt, we can see uh, easy and phase separation. So we saw that uh, uh, 
Z is the cause of uh, this phase separation. And this picture you can see uh, very clearly, the EZ water is just, just uh, around here, not here, remember. It's gradually floating up to formulate the clear water on top of that. So uh, the basic mechanism we found is uh, EZ water firstly formed and it floats up. And why it floats up to the, to the top? And so the next question we have to get an answer. Floating app, maybe it's because of the, the density difference, buoyancy force, it's, it's going up. That's what we saw. So uh, what we did is we changed the concentration of uh, our particles, in this case uh, carbon black, it's black part is carbon black. So we changed the concentration from low concentration to high concentration. I'm sorry, this is not the, the highest, but uh, these are the differences. So you can see uh, the lowest ones, uh, we cannot clearly see the EZ, but when the concentration is gradually going up, we can see a clear water zone here. So the rate of formation is a bit different. 0.48 is this one. It's no clear um, uh, supernatant. But when the concentration is increased, we can see a clear zone water zones. So it is dependent on the particle con concentration that we we found, and then we increased further, expecting the efficiency should be better. But uh, to our surprise, when we increase the concentration, this is a concentration in log scale, we in further increase the concentration. When the concentration is too high, again, we didn't see this phase separation. So phase separation takes place in a, in a certain range of particle concentration, particle depth. So this, I think, is one of the reasons why, in the past, nobody reported this uh, findings. Um, because uh, the, this is, oh, I have to go fast. Um, because this is dependent on the Napier membranes, so we, we increase the number of Napier membranes in this Quebec from one sheet to four sheets. Uh, we found the first rate is fast with four membranes. Uh, but the, the, the terminal, final uh, supernatant size, size was not so much different. And then we tried to um, figure why the, the, the number of uh, uh, the Anapion sheet didn't uh, affect the final terminal uh, uh, supernatant size. One reason is Anapion layer gradually declined and easy formation layer dropped. This one is four membranes. It, Nafion area is first about four times different, but gradually, because the particles uh, gradually settle down, the, the, the area that faced with the Nafion is gradually coming down. So that's one reason. The other is uh, with four uh, Nafion membranes. This one is highly concentrated. So we saw these are two reasons why we cannot find uh, this uh, clear water zone. So, so far we used only Nafion membranes. And then uh, we, we thought of uh, what's going to happen with uh, other membranes. So we used Napier membranes, uh, mixed, uh, mixed cellulose ester membranes, uh, regenerated cellulose membranes, and uh, cellulose acetate membranes. With all these membranes, we can see a clear water zone. So, but uh, we can find uh, the largest uh, clear water zone with Napier membranes. That's what we found. Um, then, uh, this is a bit uh, difficult to explain, but we, we used different types of uh, uh, particles, uh, same diameter with, with different uh, surface functional groups. We used two, two different uh, particles with amino, calvicidate, and sulfate groups, uh, surface functionalized. The average EZ size, almost the same, but the supernatant size was very much different. With amino acid, largest, and sulfate the smallest. We have no answer to why this happened, but uh, I would like to draw your attention to this. But, um, one reason of, uh, we can um, explain the reason uh, why this happened is with amino acid uh, functional group, uh, amino functional group, um, the uh, particle we observe aggregation from 0 0.23 microns to 1.96 microns. Then we calculated the, uh, the gravity uh, settling rate as 0.36 millimeter per hour. 
but the, the difference between these two is much greater than this lake. So there should be something else we don't know uh, that can cause a difference between different uh, particles. Uh, effect of high ionic strength, this is again very tricky. Okay. First, we can see a clear water zone here, but after waiting for three hours, this result is very difficult to explain. With no salt, we can see clear water zones. With one mil M, we can see, it, but at five, we cannot see any. And then it comes down. And with, with uh, five hours, we can see a very clear zone. And then we found the salt also is rejected uh, at a rate of about 60%. Uh, I, I, let me go through very quickly about the application of this process. We, we tried how we can apply our findings to a sort of water treatment equipment. It's very simple. This is an inflow with pumping systems with, uh, with miniature of tubes. And this is a picture, then we can find uh, a clear water zone. Then we use uh, particles, black particles, and then, then we found that uh, the removal rate is 99.98% uh, recovery rate. <coughs> and the uh, removal rate is uh, nearly 99%, nearly 100%, and the recovery is almost 100% of the water was recovered. Um, then we change the flow rate. Uh, even if we increase the flow rate to five times, we can uh, maintain a high uh, recovery rate of uh, water. So this is a challenge uh, we are facing now. It's the picture, and what we did is that we just uh, moved maybe 10 times towards this way, but we have to move further to uh, get our uh, water treatment processes. Okay? Is that uh, I would like to Thank you. We've reached the time, but maybe we can have one more question. If there is one interesting question. I don't know if it's an interesting question, but it's a question. Uh, so, next to the naphion, you have an exclusion zone. Beyond the exclusion zone, you have protons. and. Um, I wonder whether it's the protons that are the, the missing factor in, in explaining some of this because those protons will then link all of the sphere, microspheres and whatever to form big complexes which then might settle to the bottom. Do you think that's a possibility? Uh, that could be. We, so far we just came up with this result and uh, we didn't look carefully into the mechanisms. So we, we look Question in the back. So when you add salt, it, it, it lowers the effect, so does that kind of make it difficult to use as a desalination device? Uh, we hope so, but uh, the salt rejection rate is still 60%, uh, which is not high enough to supply uh, fresh water. Yeah, but you can recycle that. But did, did That's a good idea. But yeah. it seemed like you, when you added salt, the effect went away. Is that right, or did I misunderstand that? We, we, the exclusion um, zone got smaller when you added uh, co higher concentrations of salt. If the salt concentration is beyond a certain level, up to some levels, it's, it's fine. So we cannot so far apply sea water desalination. But 10, salt 000, level is too high. You had 10,000 parts per million. Yes. It worked. But above that, it started with. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you very much for your thank interesting you presentation. For your